And, you know, as we speak, the, the Kobe Bryant memorial is going on. And I read, I think, in TMZ and all over the internet, you spoke to Kobe the night before and you were supposed to train Gigi, you know, a short time after that. Can you can you backtrack to that phone call and then hearing the news? Sure. Um, Friday night, I'm in the studio getting ready to do the TV with, um, I'm in the studio here in Dallas doing the Pelicans game. So there's guys that are doing the, the Spurs game and Nuggets game or Oklahoma City. And um, they're sitting in some cubes. There's TVs all over the wall. And I don't know if it was Greg Buckner or who it was. And somebody said, hey, can you believe Kobe said women can play in the NBA? And I kind of popped my head up and I go, hello, I'm still here. And they turned around. We started laughing because we're all great friends. And I was like, guys, I had to play against you in my prime, you know, from 25 to 35, I was playing against you because I didn't have a WNBA. I was a 39 year old rookie in, in 1997. And so we started talking. So I was just goofing around and I said, well, let's, let's ask Kobe what he thinks since we're talking. So I texted him. It's like seven o'clock at night. He texts me right back, and I'll look. I'll, I'll pull up my text right now because I'll never get rid of it. And the cool thing about him is he was always honest, and that's what I loved about about Kobe. And I said to him, "You know, you want to talk about women in the NBA?" And he says, "Yes." And I said, "When?" He says, "Now." And you know, he hits me back with, "They absolutely could." Reporter was acting like they couldn't. Doesn't mean they need to, but blank the level of respect because they're women so normal dudes think they can overpower them is BS and frustrating as hell. The NBA players would get served, let alone, let alone some normal weekend warrior ass Joe. And we just kept going, you know, I mean, uh, the thread just kept going. And then finally he says, you know, you want to come out, next week and coach Gianna's team. And I said, yes, when? And in typical Kobe fashion, we practice every night. I fly to do an appearance I have that I've been scheduled for six, seven months to do in uh, Indian Wells, California. And I got there Saturday and late Saturday night, I get a phone call from Kobe and he's like, hey, let's firm up, you know, Mr. Detail, let's firm up the plans can you come? When can you come? I said, I can, I can come Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, because then I have TV. He says, Wednesday. I said, great. Uh, he says, you'll, you'll come to LA. Uh, you'll come to the house. We'll grab some food. We'll get Gianna. We'll take the, the helicopter over. And he goes, you have as long as you want. You and I just on the court with them. And I was like, cool. So I said, okay, I, I started looking up some flights. I said, I'll let you know Monday, because I knew I was coming home Monday morning. I said, I'll let you know Monday, and I'll get the address, and we'll get it all locked up. I told my son, TJ, who's playing uh, professionally in Tel Aviv. So I talked to Kobe tonight, and he's like, why are you talking to Kobe? And he was like, it's none of your business. No. <laughs> and uh, I said, you know, he wants me to come and, and put Gianna's team to practice with him. But I didn't have the plan that later, subsequently, I had the next night with him. So I'm at this conference, and I sit in the last row. There's like 700 people there, last row, first seat, because I hate being like trapped like a rat. And I, I have the attention span of a fly. So if I need to walk out or just, I can't sit through two hours of presentation. I swear to God, I turn my phone on vibrate. And... I guess I didn't. Had my phone been on vibrate while my son was calling me, I would have been in this conference for two hours. And he, he thought I was on the helicopter that crashed. So had I not picked up my phone, he would have thought something happened to me. This is how God works in my life. So I pick up the phone, it's TJ, and it's ringing loud. And I run out the back of the, the ballroom and I go, TJ, he goes, Mother, mother, I go, yeah. He goes, mom, sit down. I go, TJ, what's wrong? He goes, mother, sit down. You haven't heard, have you? I go, TJ, you haven't heard what? He goes, mom, Kobe's helicopter crashed and he died. And I thought you were on it. 
I there, these Secret Service guys were you could I was like I couldn't breathe, and I I, I it was so hard for me just to stand there because I was I couldn't it was a dream. These three guys ran over. I hear somebody say it's Miss Lieberman. They grabbed me, and they they like carry me to a room and set me down. I mean. I was hyperventilating. I was bawling so bad. Did you... <sighs> he was such um, an amazing human being. And um, he had time for everybody. I mean, when I was at the U.S. Open in September, he flipped the coin to open the matches um, on Monday. And I was flipping the coin to open the matches on Tuesday. And so I texted him. I'm like, are you still here? He goes, yeah. I said, I'm flipping the coin tomorrow. And he goes, yeah, it's kind of fun. I go, I'm going behind the back. He goes, really? I said, oh, I'm sorry. Did you just flip it in front of you? Like, <laughs> so, so, you know, knowing the way Kobe is, you know, we were just having fun. And, um, and then like the body issue came out, you know, in ESPN. He goes, you're doing it again. Really, our bond happened in 19 in 2008 so you know in 97 you know i played in the for the phoenix mercury in the wmba at 39 38 in 2008 i played you know for detroit um at the age of 50. so after i played the game was on you know espn national tv i go to my real job working for espn and i'm doing the laker game with van gundy and mark jackson and we finished doing our work with uh, Phil Jackson. And I'm walking down the hall and Kobe goes, hey. And I'm like, hi. And he goes, you got a minute? I said, of course. And we went in this room and we sat down and he goes, okay, why would you play at 50? <laughs> what did you do? How did you eat? Were you nervous? Were you not? I was like, whoa. I said, didn't you just win the MVP and like championship? But the beauty of Kobe, he was one of the most curious people and he didn't care that I was a 50 year old white woman he wanted to pick my brain and put it in his think tank like at the end of my career he was storing up information but he wanted to know how I slept how I ate what my support system was like um he he, he was pretty amazing he was genuinely um he was motivated uh, because he couldn't believe, he said, you know, Vanessa and my daughter, we, we, we watched this. He was so proud. Um, and he used to call me, you know, like you have nicknames of people that you'll never share, like Vanessa shared today. Of course, of course. He, nicknames. At, at 50, he used to call me uh, the Mama Mamba. <laughs> it, it, because I was, you know, I was a mom. You know, we both had that, you know, kind of predator mentality. <laughs> And he even asked me, like, when at the height of my career, like, what were you like? And I said, well, honestly, I wanted to keep people's, you know, behind. I hope they looked at the schedule and went, oh, my gosh. You know, because we, we wanted to physically, mentally, and emotionally, I hate to say it, uh, it, it is ladylike, destroy you.